A very good evening. I'm Aditi Lama with the Wednesday night edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New Jersey. Welcome to the show. Hope you all had a great day. Let's begin the episode taking a look at the coronavirus pandemic updates as well as measures. The world is at more than 271 million COVID-19 cases and more than 5 million deaths. Today, the European Union public health body said that there is a very high risk that the Omicron variant of the COVID-19 will become the dominant in Europe by early next year and will lead to a growing number of hospitalizations and deaths. It also stated that this variant will also take over Delta within the first two months of 2022. It is being said that booster doses would increase protection according to the current evidence, bringing all attention now on getting more people boosted. Here in the United States, we are at more than 50 million cases of the coronavirus and more than 800,000 deaths. In California, an indoor mask mandate has gone into effect with the fears of the Omicron variant. Several colleges and universities today have also returned to online classes and finals amidst the surge in cases and deaths. This includes institutions such as NYU and the Princeton University. On this and much more, we continue to discuss coronavirus on the show tonight, along with exclusive with Indian artists and actors. So let's now take a look at the headlines for tonight. CDC says Omicron more transmissible as cases rise. Dr. Lt. Col. Kamal Kalsi, New Jersey. U.S. surpasses 800,000 deaths as Omicron spreads. Dr. Dina Adam Ulam, New York. Indo-American Arts Council presents Literary Festival 2021 featuring Carl Penn, New York City. On coronavirus updates and measures, in the United Kingdom, hospitalization rates have been rising as the new concerning Omicron variant of the COVID-19 sparked a wave of new infections. Health officials in England have warned that number of new cases would break records in the next few weeks. Many health experts here in the United States are now fearing that this new trajectory of cases from Omicron will be seen here in the next coming weeks. Today, the CDC reported that new infections caused by the Omicron variant has increased sharply and could cause another wave in the next coming weeks. Regions such as here in New Jersey, New York, Puerto Rico and U.S. Virgin Islands, Omicron infections have already reached 13%. This is happening while the Delta variant is still causing more number of cases, making a strong case for all to get vaccinated in the nation. Remember, you protect yourself and others by getting the COVID-19 vaccine. It's a service to the people of this country. So again, you can visit vaccines.gov for more information. On this and much more, we spoke with Dr. Dina Adimulam. Here is Dr. Adimulam about the cases and deaths in the nation right now. We're looking at more than 800,000 deaths in the nation with at least 50 million cases. My question to you is why is this happening and what are you observing while you are treating patients? So we do believe that this surge is expected after having had Thanksgiving together with many families coming together um, in certain areas. And we are also seeing a rise in areas as we had expected, you know, where we have a lot of unvaccinated populations. Right. And then let's now talk about what is also causing the surge of cases that the news that is coming in today. We're hearing that the new variant, the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, is causing and doubling the number of cases every two days. How are you looking at Omicron's arrival into the United States and what is it going to do to the cases and numbers of deaths? Well, as you know, currently in the United States, um, Delta variant is still the specific variant that's causing the most number of hospitalizations and cases. So this is still a pandemic of the Delta variant being the predominant strain. We know that Omicron has made its 
exposure here in the United States, but we haven't really seen that significant number of cases yet. We know that it may potentially rise as we look at data that um, is coming out of South Africa, where the Omicron variant is the predominant strain and there is an increase in the number of cases related to that variant. But we just don't have enough information yet to know how Omicron is going to affect our U.S. population here. The EU is saying that Omicron will become a dominant variant in the next coming months. In the UK, it's already getting to that level. So is it just time, doctor, before we see the same trend or trajectory of cases here with Omicron? So I think only time is going to tell, Aditi. We really don't know. We can't really con we can't really compare ourselves to other populations. Um, so we're going to have to see what exactly happens in the United States. If you look at the vaccination rates, vaccination rates rather in areas like South Africa compared to the United States, the vaccine rates in South Africa are 20 to 30 percent, which is much less than what they are here. So it's important to sort of keep that in mind when we're looking at the populations and the trajectories that we are alluding to in other countries. Um, however, if the Omicron variant becomes as significant as it is in countries like the UK, similar to you know, what we might expect in other areas in Europe where they have similar vaccination rates in the United States, it's going to be very important to make sure that we're doing everything to be cautionary um, in terms of protecting ourselves against this. Right now, when looking at this country, what areas are you most concerned about as we go into the months of winter? So we have a lot of data coming out of certain states like Michigan, for example, um, where there's been a lot of recent hospitalizations. Hospitals are talking about how they are um, understaffed, some of them, how they're concerned about bed shortages. So some of the situations similar to what we were seeing last year at this time in different areas around the country are being seen in places uh, like Michigan. And talking to colleagues there, you know, people are also concerned about, you know, what this means for people who are coming into the hospital for other reasons, like a motor vehicle accident or for a heart attack, for example. So it's very important to look at those populations to do the best that you can if you're living in those states where there's a a lot of people getting infected with COVID right now and do everything that you can to be safe. So the main places I'm concerned about at this moment, just looking at the data this morning, is Michigan, Indiana, um, and Ohio. And of course, I'm still concerned about the areas where vaccination rates are less than 55% in the country, um, as well as becoming potential hotspots, especially after the holiday get togethers. Let's talk about the vaccine doctor a little bit. Um, you know, we are trying to push vaccinations across the country. The Biden administration is doing the same thing. There's also a push for booster doses to get more booster doses into the arms of Americans. Now, if you look at it in a strategic manner, what needs to be the focus right now? What will get us through this pandemic a little bit better? Is it focusing on the booster or getting more of the first doses into the arms of Americans? So I think it's important to remember that you'll only qualify for a booster after you've received the initial vaccination. So I think that the focus should be on getting as many individuals vaccinated as possible. People who are above the age of five years and older, unless there's a contraindication, can all qualify for getting a COVID-19 vaccine. We have a lot of data to suggest that it's safe and effective. And we also know that the booster is extremely important at this time as well. It improves your ability to fight off COVID-19 infection. It improves your antibodies significantly, sometimes up to 40 times more antibodies after receiving the booster vaccination. So if you're 16 um, to 17 years old and you've gotten the Pfizer vaccination in the past, then you can maybe qualify for the Pfizer booster vaccine. And if you're 18 and over, you can qualify for any of the booster vaccinations. So please consider getting boosted and vaccinated. More on coronavirus updates and measures. Today, nation's leading health expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, stated that booster doses of the currently available COVID-19 vaccines work against the Omicron variant, and there appears to be no need for a variant-specific booster. CDC's director, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, on this new variant said that Omicron has been confirmed in at least 36 states and said that Omicron is more transmissible than Delta with a doubling time of about two days. This news comes as the Biden administration continues its push to vaccinate most of the nation and get eligible people the booster dose. 
Meanwhile, in politics of coronavirus, a U.S. federal appeals court revived in 26 days a Biden administration COVID-19 vaccine mandate requiring millions of U.S. health workers to get vaccinated if they work in federally funded facilities. The government argues that vaccine mandates will potentially save thousands of lives every month and deaths are projected to spike with the onset of winter. On this and much more, we have now our conversation with Dr. Lieutenant Colonel Kamal Kalsi. Here is the segment. And since you are already saying that we're going to see a surge from the holiday season, what could be then done on a national level, perhaps, to actually control this? Is this controllable or, or we're too, it's too late? No, it's, it's most certainly controllable. It's, it's not too late. Uh, again, it's just common sense things, right? I mean, I think you can still uh, meet uh, and connect with your friends and families over the holidays uh, safely. You know, if you are uh, having any sort of symptoms, uh, uh, if you feel sick or you have a fever, cough, sore throat, whatever, um, you know, it's, it's better to uh, not participate in, in family functions. It's better not to go out and spread the infection. Uh, but also, it's, uh, you know, if you are going to do this, uh, uh, it makes sense to, to wear a mask and, and do uh, social distancing as we as we had done previously. And travel is also at the all-time high that we have seen in the last two years of the pandemic. Are you uh, worried about it? What should we know about traveling and how should we prevent ourselves from COVID? Uh, you know, travel is, uh, is part of the holiday season. So we, uh, I, I think we cannot stop people from traveling. I don't think that's a reasonable request. Uh, but I, I, again, I think it's important that people do it safely. So wear your masks. Uh, certainly, if you're flying, uh, you want to keep your masks on at all times. Uh, and, you know, I, I hear this a lot from my patients that, look, um, they, they don't want, they don't like masks. They don't want to wear them all the time. Uh, and I understand, I get it, um, but, uh, but this is for, a, uh, for, for our national health, for public safety. There may be a, uh, a cancer patient sitting next to you um, and you would hate to pass on something to them uh, or somebody with a, a compromised immune system. Uh, you, you really wanna do this for your, um, for your neighbors, your friends and your family. We, we all have to do our part to try to uh, minimize the risk. So parts of the nation are already requiring masks in indoor public places where vaccination statuses cannot be checked. How important do you think that step is? I think that's a, a, a very, I think that's a really reasonable thing to do, you know, especially if you can't, uh, if you can't verify vaccination status, then you, then you default to the least common uh, denominator or the most conservative measure, which is look, every everybody wears masks, everybody social distances, and we know that those very very simple things have uh, have helped to uh, slow down the progression of uh, transmission, and that that's going to be the name of the game, especially with uh, the the Omicron variant that's come out. It is highly highly infectious. Uh, uh, you know, certainly more infectious than uh, the previous uh, variants that we've seen. Uh, even though that, uh, even though the preliminary data shows that the uh, mortality and lethality of this uh, uh, variant is lower, uh, if it infects more people, uh, we may actually end up seeing more people die from. We have now another segment of the closing event of the very successful Literary Festival 2021 brought together by the Indo-American Arts Council. The council prides itself in building an awareness of arts and artists of Asian Indian heritage. With its mission to promote and empower Indian writers, authors and poets, this literary festival saw week-long virtual and in-person events with many celebrating the contributions of Indians and concluded with an exclusive interaction with actor, writer, producer Kalpen on his new book, You Can't Be Serious. 
Joining him in the conversation were Indian American actresses Serena Jindal and Melanie Chandra, the stars of Comedy Central's new movie, Hot Miss Holiday, featuring all South Asian American cast and a storyline that is very relatable to many of us. The movie also celebrates Indian Festival of Lights, Diwali. We spoke to both Serena and Melanie along with other prominent South Asian personalities present at the event. Here are some highlights. I want to know where are you going ahead with the book and the book tour? What are you looking forward to? I know you love meeting your supporters, you love signing books, but also in the, you know, in the industry of movies and production and you, know, you want to produce, you want to create more. What can we look forward to? You know, the new year is coming. Yeah, so the, the book just came out. I'm uh, on, a, on a big book tour. Uh, obviously, the, the, the places you might think of, New York, Chicago, L.A., San Francisco, but um, going to St. Louis tomorrow, going to a few other places into January and February. Uh, and then a lot of online and digital events, including some digital events that we're doing with personal signings. So um, stay tuned to my Instagram, Twitter pages, my website. We'll get more information as we roll that out. But one of the things I'm really excited about is, unlike movies where it comes out, there's a hard release date, and everyone watches it that weekend or that two weekends, the nice thing about books is you can share it with people over time. Um, I've been really flattered by the amazing support and word of mouth from the community about it and just uh, excited for people to get it and read it. You know, I have to ask you this before I let you go. Sure. Your fans, you know, you've been called the American treasure in oh one of God. your... Who said that? It's, no, it's, said it's that. one of the reviews. On. They said that, you know, your book is a treasure map. Oh I'm really God. excited about reading That's it. Really I've just, nice. I've read so many reviews. They said you can't even fake this, you know, what you wrote in it, it's so real and it's so relatable. Thanks. So what do you have to say to your fans and your supporters and, you know, a message out for them? I, look, I just got to say I really respect and appreciate and I'm so humbled by the love that you have shown me over the years, but then especially when it comes to my book, you all know different versions of my story, right, that we've had the chance to share off and on. And uh, I spent the last four and a half years writing this book, like I said, when we started talking for the younger version of me, um, you know, I wanted to uh, really uh, show respect to the community that supported us. And when I say us, it's not just me, it's other, other artists and people who are maybe doing something that's non-traditional and I appreciate the love and support so much. So hope you like the book, hope you like the audio book. Um, I'm really biased here, but it makes a great holiday gift. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. And we are so excited to have with us none other than Mel and Serena, Melanie Chandra and Serena. Thank you so much for being with us here on ITV Gold. I have to ask you congratulations. Thank you. You know, so much. your film premiered on Comedy Central just last night, and we finally saw a South Asian representation, a whole movie full of it. How does it feel? How are the fans responding to you? What are you feeling? Woo. Uh, woo. Um, <laughs> we're very grateful and overwhelmed. We didn't really expect this sort of support, but it came in floods and we're just very moved. Yeah, we were brought to tears last night. Yeah. We had a, a watch party and it's funny because it's like this banger comedy holiday movie and at the end everyone's like, yeah, cool. And then me and we're like, <laughs> you know, like just so deeply emotional about it. Yeah. So it's been, it's like, it's really heartwarming to feel all the love and support from everybody. You know, talk to me a little bit about the journey because you both started Serena and Mel, Mel and Serena a while ago, right? And you didn't let go of it, no matter what. So how does it feel to like come in full circle? And you know, talk to us a little bit about that process. Sure. So this started seven years ago in terms of us creating content together. We were just writing and producing web sketches and putting it online. And then we started thinking about something bigger than that. And we formed a web series idea. And eventually it was a TV show idea. And we kept pitching that around town. And we just heard no's left and right. And um, But we knew in our hearts that something like this needed to exist because the little girls in us wanted to see that yeah. as well. And then fast forward to 2021, we have our own feature film on Comedy Central and it's just, it's amazing. And it was so crazy because we, we uh, put out this web short version yeah. and in that web short version, there's an ending scene of Mel and I in front of a halal cart yeah. at the end of a night and we just like reconvene as friends and we just think about our futures. Yeah. We shot that scene and then cut to we shot the exact same scene, but this time it was like over the Chicago riverfront. It was with a big giant crane. It was with this huge budget. So we, it was like doing the same scene, but seeing it scaled. And it was just, we felt like, oh, our vision came true finally. Yeah. What do you 
say to artists that now are trying to break that barrier just like you both have been trying to do as well and you've finally done so, what do you advise to them? I advise, well, first working on your craft. You know, don't assume that things will just magically appear. It, it takes a lot of hard work and you have to have thick skin because this industry is very cruel. It is very cruel for the weak. Um, so that's one thing, but also try to find your collaborator. Like Serena and I found each other. We bring out so much uh, interesting facets of each other. We play off each other nicely. We're completely polar opposites in terms of our like, in terms of like our skill sets. And so like, I'm like type A, very much a planner, and she's like, Mel, don't overthink it. We need to get it out there. So we work really well, and that's, that's my number thing. But if you find someone, like hold on to that person. That is so important. Yeah. What do you have to say? I would say it's all, it's so much of it is a mental game, and then the rest of it is execution. So <clears throat> if you can hone in on your, your mental health through this process, because it is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you really have to be there for yourself through all of this. And like Mel said, find your tribe, find your people to support you otherwise. But I think for me, it's always about chasing what feels good. Yeah. Whenever Mel and I met up, even though we didn't know, is this ever gonna be a thing? It always felt good to meet up and work on this and it was fun. Yeah. And so I would wake up in the morning and just do things that felt good. So just chase what feels good and yeah. that same energy will follow back. Talk to us about filming your favorite scene from the movie. Oh my gosh. So you have to tell us what the favorite scene is. A little bit about it. I think, I think it's the very first scene of the movie because that's where you get to meet all of these supporting cast members. And so for us, these are the actors that we admired from afar. And so we just show up to set and it's like, Richard Marjani and Poonam Patel and Rithish Rajan, like all in a span of a day, we're like, hello, hello, hello. And everyone was just so grateful to be there. We were so excited. And, you know, it was our first time seeing the set come alive. And um, just that memory will always stay with me. What about you? I really enjoyed uh, this scene where we come out of the elevator, we're wearing Indian clothes, and we're trying to do the hot girl thing. And then we open the doors into Chicago winter. And then I get to like, blow up with cuss words that I made up on the spot and I'm screaming it through the suburbs of Chicago and I was just like oh this is freedom <laughs> this is artistic expression at its finest you know, I have to ask you how do you feel about Comedy Central right now and you know their push towards diversity showing more people of color just on the platform how important do you think that is I think Comedy Central has phenomenal taste yeah, I think so too. I mean, they've been tremendously supportive of us as creatives, meaning, you know, people would say, oh, you take a project to Hollywood, they're going to want to whitewash it and not let you lean into diversity and all that. But they totally let us lean into our unique voices and in terms of, you know, we play this middle ground. We neither, we're neither too Indian nor we're too American. We're in this weird, weird middle ground and they totally let us embrace that. So... They didn't have us lean into any sort of stereotypes or tropes we've seen before, and um, we were just happy to do what we did. So, yeah. Yeah, you get worried as a creator, like once you send in the script, and you're like, oh God, what are these notes going to be? What are these rounds of notes going to be? Yes. And they really elevated the, the yeah. script. So they, as Mel was saying, they were very creator friendly. The notes on the project were really great. So there were very few times where it was any sort of contentious collaboration, which is really rare. So. We like Comedy Central, Viacom a lot, yeah. <laughs> no, two more questions left here for you. What is coming next for Serena and Mel? And what is coming next for the, the movie itself? Are you going to be touring around the country? Are you going to be seeing more and more members of the community like you're seeing today? What is the plan? What's the plan? What is the plan? <laughs> we, we want this to be just the beginning. Okay. So our hope is that this is the, the seed that sparks the rest of the, the journey, the future that we foresee. So yeah, I mean, we would love to keep doing events like this. It's so important for people to share. This week is so, so important for the film because based on how this week does, it'll show Hollywood like brown people do deserve films like this. This isn't just one of a kind. So please do share it. And especially, especially this week, the numbers have to hit and then, and then we will solidify more stuff to come. Yeah, we just uh, spread the word on social media. Um, internationally is also the international rollout is happening soon right now too. It's going to be in India, I think, on at the end of the month. At the end of the month. You can get it on ComedyCentral.com. You can get it on iTunes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazon, Voodoo, Google, yeah. all of that. Yes. With this, we wrap up our show for the night. Please send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. You can email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on our Facebook handle at itvgold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. 
Thank you for joining us tonight from Edison, New Jersey. This is Vision of Asia and I am Liti Lamba. Take care and be well.